Newark at a Crossroads. That's the title of an ambitious new series on the revitalization of Newark post Cory Booker. It's coming up on one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adovato on NJTV and Channel 13. Host Steve Adovato joins us now to talk about it. Welcome, Steve. Good to see you. Good to be with you, Michael. This is an exciting project for you. Tell me why. Well, number one, uh, born and raised in Newark, as are you. You know, I mean, for a lot of people, they talk about Newark, Cory Booker. But post Cory Booker, the question is what happens? What happens when it comes to crime, violent crime? What happens when it comes to uh, urban schools? Cammie Anderson is uh, the superintendent. She's been on NJTV News many, many times. But the question becomes, what about her relationship with the mayor, Roz exactly. Baraka? What happens when it comes to uh, those who don't go to the public schools, go to charter, semi public schools, if you will, and those who don't go to public schools at all. What happens with downtown development, NJ Pack, a lot of other things happening there, the arts community, the, the, the cultural activities happening. Um, technology is booming downtown, the city of Newark. And do those on the outside of downtown development feel disconnected? All those and other issues looked at at uh, Newark at a crossroads. The most exciting guest that you have for this series and what that guest has to say about Newark going forward. You know, it's so interesting. Going forward, the person I was most fascinated by was Dr. Clement Price. Right. You know, because he's a historian. He is the historian for the city of Newark from Rutgers University. He's a mentor of mine. Clem Price has been at Rutgers for a long time. He knows Newark better than anyone else. So when he talks about, Michael, the city of Newark and where we have come from through the riot, getting through that, race right. relations, all that, and he is optimistic in spite of all the challenges. That's exciting for me because Clem Price knows Newark better than anyone else. So he is just not a booster because right. he's a politician. Not that that's bad, but he's a booster because he truly believes. And he takes a realistic point of view. Very realistic. Very realistic. He acknowledges that the Fed, when the federal government comes in and deals with the fact that the police department's struggling with the minority community, so. that's real. When the state comes in and says, look at state, the, the urban finances, excuse me, the municipal finances, we're going to have to come in and step in and help you out. When the school system is controlled by the state government, those are real issues. So when Clem Price says that, I mean, he's not the only one. There's so many other experts right. here. But when he's optimistic, it's because he believes the city has a spirit. They call it Brick City for a reason. I mean, it's tough as nails. And those of us who are born and raised there, um, even if we don't live there anymore, we haven't given up. We still work there. We still do our business there. Or we're connected to it. And um, I believe the future is bright. How do the speakers and the guests that you have on, how do they envision Newark being revitalized? What's going to happen for it to have this rebirth? Well, listen, you cannot ignore the fact, Michael, that downtown a lot is happening. Panasonic comes in, Prudential expands from where they are to a new facility down there. I believe the technological advancements down there, the explosion down there, um, there's potential down there. I believe there's going to be a lot of media activity because they're so close to New it's so close to New York. I believe that the arts and culture community around the New Jersey Performing Arts Center is going to explode as well. I believe the housing stock, the housing stock is better than most people think. You and I were talking about that before we got on the air. It's better than most people think. In spite of all the challenges that the city faces, housing stock better than people think. And Steve, when you talk about the new businesses, the new industries booming in downtown Newark, you're talking about a different population coming to Newark. Newark is going to change. You know, of course you want Prudential, of course you want Panasonic, you want PSC and G, Verizon, you want all the big companies. But you also want the entrepreneurs. Right. You want the startups. You want the folks who would otherwise be in Brooklyn or Silicon Valley with the startup high tech companies. A lot of them see Newark. I mean, Audible. Audible is a company with Don Katz, who is one of the leaders in the field of social, me social media and technology. Um, they're there. They're employing like a thousand people. People don't even realize that Don Katz is featured in this series as well. So it isn't just the typical movers and shakers that people know. It's some other people as well. And so we're looking forward. We did it at New Jersey uh, NJIT, the New Jersey, New Jersey Institute of Technology, the first time around. We're going to uh, NJ PAC next time around in December. And we're looking forward to having Roz Baraka, the mayor, talk about his vision for the city as well. And you must be awfully excited about this project because, as you said, we're both Newark residents, born and raised there. Uh, not Newark residents, uh, born and raised in, in, uh, in, in Newark. Where is Newark going to be, you see, in three, five, seven years? I drive through the city and I'm amazed at the progress, mm -hmm. I'm amazed at the growth, and I see a completely different Newark in, in about seven years. Again, it's a question of what neighborhood you drive through. Right. Just this weekend, it's interesting. 
I grew up in a, in a neighborhood that has changed dramatically. It was right. largely Italian-American where I grew up. But the church, it's interesting, a church, if you check it out, it's called St. Lucy's Church. There was a feast there over the past three days. Right. There's a feast. They have called it the Feast of St. Gerard. You would think it would be the Feast of St. Lucy's, but St. Gerard is this feast where they take this, this saint and they roll through the streets of this old neighborhood where people pin money on it. You say, what does that mean? It means the old-timers come back. They put money back into the community, and this church, St. Lucy's, which is an old neighborhood, that, which is largely black and Latino, is still strong. And, and I say, downtown is great, but if you can't keep those neighborhoods thriving and surviving, and the housing stock there is great, I was so taken by what was going on at that feast, and I realized when churches like St. Lucy's still survive, even if people aren't talking about it, that gives me reason to be hopeful. Even if some of us don't live there anymore, right but we still have a strong connection. All right, Steve Adelbottle talking about Newark at a Crossroads coming up on NJTV and tonight. Channel 13. That's tonight That's right. on NJTV. A lot of enthusiasm for this project, and I'm sure you put it into it as well. We look forward to it. Great Thank team, you, on it. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it, Michael. Welcome.